Whoa! To the Your Money, Your Wealth guys, Big Al and Joe just said they don't care for me? What? Man! Man, guys! Why would you do that to old Josh? I didn't do anything to you. It's all in good fun. Uh, apparently, a guy named Daryl from Ohio had emailed them. Uh, said, hey, what do you think about this guy, Josh, from Heritage Wealth Planning's recommendation to have VBK in my taxable accounts? And uh, they they didn't get the big picture. Yeah, they, they just didn't get the big picture, and that's too bad. Big Al was a little bit more diplomatic. Joe was a little bit more harsh. But, I mean, look, I don't, whatever, man. They don't know the story, so I don't, it doesn't, it's fine. Uh, I'm not offended. I just, I chuckled a little bit. I was actually kind of... Somewhat dismayed that Big Al didn't realize how uh, Vanguard ETFs work. So remember, the premise is you want your high growth stuff, low dividends, low capital gains in your taxable account. Why? Well, it doesn't pay any income while you're alive. It has no income, right? So while you're letting it grow and grow and grow, you don't really get much with 1099. VBK has about a dollar a dividend distribution yield off of basically $180 a share price. That's pretty freaking low, man. That's pretty low. That's a low, dis that's a low distribution yield on the dividend. Vanguard ETFs, by their nature, have no capital gains. All right? uh, Big Al didn't get that. I was surprised. Now, if you sell the fund at a gain, you specifically will have a capital gain. But the ETF itself does not have any annual uh, capital gain distribution because of the structure of ETFs A and because of the structure of Vanguard with a patent on how they just sell shares back to the, their uh, corresponding index fund. I don't get how it works. It seems odd to me, but hey, we'll take it. That's the, that's the nature of the beast. So ETFs have no capital gains, all right? Now we do know that. Part two, ready? At your death, the growth of that portfolio will transfer to your heirs uh, tax-free. And if you're heir, if you're in a community property state and you have it set up correctly, it could be your spouse completely tax-free because of the step-up in basis. Uh, if it transferred to your heir in a common law property state like me in Georgia, Charlotte would still get half it tax-free, which is wonderful. That does not happen in uh, IRAs and 401ks, and thus in IRAs and 401ks, we want that money to be your more conservative stuff. You know, your Wellington funds, your bonds, and things of that nature. All right. So that's how this works. Uh, now, Joe was uh, upset because, uh, upset, not the right word. He was like, ah, large cap growth, a small cap growth is the worst performing asset class. We need a diversified portfolio. No, and this is my problem. You don't want a diversified portfolio. You want a specific portfolio per each account type. Roth IRAs, that's where you have a real estate investment trust. That's where you have your uh, large cap, uh, uh, your dividends, your large cap value funds. That's if you want some high yield bonds in. That's where you want your Roth IRAs. Anything that pays a dividend should be in your Roth. Um, you want stocks in your Roth, don't want bonds, but you just said high yield bonds. I'm using that as kind of a quasi stock. If you had preferred stocks, you'd want that in your Roth. But your Roth should have all your dividend stuff for sure in your Roth. No bonds, preferred stocks, and high yield bonds are the only thing I'd look at in that regard. Everything, or REITs, REITs are still stocks, so everything else should. Uh, that would be in Roth. Everything else is stocks inherently. Uh, your, tr your, your taxable account, all right, your after IRA tax should have all the growth stuff that you could possibly get, which has minimal dividends, minimal capital gains, i.e. minimal turnover. A value small cap growth is perfect for that. If you want to get a VWO or something like that in there, by all means do that too. I don't care the specifics. I just don't like international stuff, so I keep mine VBK uh, because I don't want any 1099s. Uh, in my IRA would be like the Wellington Fund, all right? Uh, you got your uh, bonds in there, or the Wellesley Fund if you want. Or, but I mean, for me, because I don't have any bonds, I'd have just all the stocks. I got my uh, Vanguard, and I don't have a Roth, so I got my VDIGX and my VTV both in my IRA. Preferably, those would, would be my Roth, because uh, I, I would not have an IRA, I'd have everything in a Roth, but I, that's not... That's not me. I have everything in an IRA other than my taxable account for which I have VBK. So if you have any bonds, the bonds would be in your tax, in your uh, IRA 401k. You'd have your large cap growth, uh, large cap value, well, large cap growth to some extent too, because that does have dividends in your, uh, uh, in your Roth. And then you have your small cap growth, your uh, emerging markets, anything that's growth oriented that does not pay dividends in your uh, taxable account. Now, Joe is saying, but well, the small cap growth is the worst performing asset class. It doesn't matter. It's part of the overall diversification of the entirety of your portfolio. 
I, I, you know, come on, man. I, I, look, I get he doesn't get the whole question, but think about it. This it was like a talk show. We had to answer the question off the top. You could have done some research on this to look at it. Uh, just nuts. So anyway, the issue that we have here is the guy saying, oh, but, you know, why would he just recommend this one fund? You know, and they, Al said, well, we don't know the whole picture. And you don't. And so that is how this works. So Big Al uh, needs to understand how Vanguard ETFs work. Joe needs to understand uh, that small cap growth isn't the only fund that someone's talking about. It's part of the overall asset allocation, but it's part of the tax location as well. And if you're not looking at the big picture, just saying, well, the funny thing is he said, uh, small cap growth is the worst uh, asset class, so you don't want that fund. Then he started saying, and, and, uh, but you also don't want to look at the track record of a fund to determine what fund you want. It's like, come on, dude, make up your mind. Uh, do you want the, <laughs> are you going to let the track record determine your fund? No. And then you turn around and say, but you don't want small cap growth because the track record of that asset class is bad. Uh, yeah, well, it's all good. I, it just, there's a lot of education that still needs to be done. So I will continue on the march on YouTube to get you squared away when it comes to tax ban. We will see you.